So my first nest box made. So the nest mats were 500 mil from there to there. And we're 2.4 meters long in the double, two 1200s. And I just it kind of worked out an awkward size for me to get my belt in nice, as you can see. Um, we're a little bit of an overhang, so I'm actually because I'm gonna I'm gonna run now uh, a little piece. Uh, I don't have it here. I'm actually gonna pick it up tomorrow. It's aluminium, and so it's gonna run here, so the belt can rub against it. And I'm gonna have to put on this piece of box here and run my aluminium on that. Uh, just to give me a little bit of length because what was happening was I was either ending up here or way out here and I didn't want to end up way out here so this is the fix I'd done um, so yeah so we're going to end up with a piece of steel that the belt is going to run along um, like this here so it's going to run there it's actually going to be way higher than this piece and, uh, and then we're going to put a piece of probably put like anti-hotspot tape or something soft for the eggs to hit off and that's going to be your eggs and we'll just have to put on the i've got some like 0 0.03 mil uh, galvanized steel to put on the back here we're also going to have to put on uh, another piece from here over to here which will be set at a height to let an egg past and put a roof on it and we're getting there um i've got to make two more of these and then install them and then it's painting time three bolts will hold together. The reason I'm bolting it out here now because it's easy, I can get it straight and level on the floor, drill the holes and then I'll take it apart and then I can put it into the egg mobile and you'll see me do that in the next bit. Um, but really happy with how these nest boxes turned out. So this is going to be covered, I'm going to cover the top and the back here down to leave enough room for an egg roll in underneath with tin. Uh, galvanized steel and then the egg belt is going to run on here and it's really important because I'm using the weld mesh to support the egg belt that I've put the cap the bars in the direction the belt is going to go on top so that these are going to guide because you can see the lat this one here is in underneath and this is the direction the belt's going to come so these bars are going to guide the belt and yeah I gotta get these guys stuck together Nest boxes are in, and you see we've got them all pivoting. Got four uprights, they're bolted together in three sections, and then they're just pivoted like so, which means we can set the angle. I'm going to run an actuator from here up to this bar, and another one down there. And if they extend or retract, they will level it out. And just now at the minute you can see I left enough clearance so we're never going to foul in there and we have enough clearance so that we don't foul up there as well so they're positioned well. The next job I'm working on here now is these are rollers I made for my winter housing just got two bearings and a roller and I'm just making a mountain bracket now so I can put some thread of bar through here and here and here and here and then these will get bolted onto it so that's what we're working on now and my egg belt's gonna run along here okay got my roller unit mounted i didn't really describe much about how i made this i made this roller back uh it was actually beginning of last winter because uh, i ran if you look back at my videos i ran a egg belt in my winter housing uh, it's very cheap it's got a a wooden i mean there's so many different ways you can make this uh, I tend towards wood because I'm a carpenter so inside here is a round disc that I cut out perfectly to fit inside this is just a four inch sewer pipe there's a round disc in there you can see it's screwed into it and then I put on these end plates and this is compressed in here so this bolt is tightened in against this bolt so that when you turn the thread at bar the whole thing turns and I've done this for both of them so that means if I mechanize this to turn this bar the whole thing turns okay and then it's just bolted on to these uh, bearings here which makes it really smooth action um, now I'm hoping to automate this is actually the end roller and then of course you need to be able to adjust it one to tighten the belt so what I would do is I would let it let it as far forward as it can go put on the belt and then 
tighten these back so it pushes it back and you also need to be able to change each side independently because if it's off tracking then you need to manipulate this here either like so um, to make sure that the belt tracks through um, so you need adjustment there and I'm going to do the same on this end I'm just trying to figure out down here originally I was going to in my original design I had the nest boxes sitting much higher I had them almost pivoting up high and I realized it was going to be too high to get the birds to get up to it because um, if the bird was standing here to get way up there it was just too much of a jump but what because my original intention was this belt would be sitting at standing height at waist height so i could stand in here and collect the eggs with these now the belt is too low to easily collect them standing so i'm looking up i'm going to put a seat in here and i'm going to collect them so i'm just working out now where i've got some trays in here where i would like to put my trays and i'm either going to rest i'm going to fit this roller here on and see i should be able to sit with my knees and underneath and get nice and tight in so i have two options I either put a little tray here a little uh, platform here so i can put my trays on there or i can sit a little bit further back and put the tray on my knee but i've decided i'm going to fit the roller first and then see which is the most useful because remember if i'm going to use this thing for the next 25 years and i make you know i was thinking about putting the tray to the left but think of 25 years worth of picking up an egg turning pivoting dropping um that's going to start to uh, take its toll so i want it to be the most easeful way and uh, clever design now will pay dividends down the line in years you know if i design a system that is three seconds more efficient every time i collect eggs imagine in 25 years how much time i've saved okay, so i've got the back roller on now and i've left it i'll put if I automate it, I'll put a motor on that side, or I can put a ratchet spanner on there. And this will have to come off again, because the next job now is to paint everything. That's going to take me quite a while. And we'll start at the top and work my way down through it. Once we get it all painted, we've got to do the axles, the dolly. Uh, so there's going to be, um, probably going to be close to it'll take me close to a week i can only really i only really get it maybe four to six hours at a time at it so uh half a week to a week depending on how much time i can get on it and continuous but once i get it painted we will drop in the floors uh, mesh floors top and bottom and it'll be time for the cladding okay uh been painting for like eight hours i think um Got all the top, got a coat all the top, got basically all the pillars down to this level. Got half the nest boxes done, uh, down as far as there. So next I got to do the whole bottom structure and the back axle and the front axle and then do it all again because I want to put two coats of paint on this. Um, very boring, very slow, but got to protect the steel. Um, people ask why I don't galvanize it. Um, I could have galvanized it, it would double the cost of the steel probably, it would make it last a lot longer, but I would have, made it diff have to make it differently as well, because um, I would have to send it off in sections and then bolt it together, um, and time isn't on my side, so I didn't go for the galvanized option, I went for the paint, um, I mean it's probably going to take me, I think maybe three days to paint this in total, um, three good days. Uh, so that's what I went for, I mean I'm regretting it now, but <laughs> once it's done, it's done. Okay, that is the, all the upper structure painted once. Oh, I hate painting. Um, but, I mean, the disadvantage to painting is you're only coating one side of the steel. The inside is uncoated, so that'll rust from the inside out eventually. Um, compared to galvanizing, but it is way cheaper. Um, so that's why I'm doing it. I've already talked again about the pros and cons of galvanizing version versus painting, but... Yeah, uh, I just dislike painting. Uh, I'm not particularly good at it, and uh, yeah, but I'm getting it done. So I just have to do the undercarriages, the back and front axles, and I gotta do it all again, because I wanna put two coats on it. Um, but it's doing a pretty good job. I'm putting it on pretty heavy, if you can see there. Putting a good thick layer on there, um, and I'll do another layer like that. The next layer probably won't be as thick, um, just to give it a good coating. 
And that should keep it for, I'll maybe repaint it in 10 years. I don't know if I'll even be here. Oh, finally, painting's done. Um, took 10 liters of paint, 60 euros, I think. And just when I had the dolly or the fifth wheel light, I thought I'd show you it. So this is it all greased up. So this plate, and then there's got, it's got a matching plate in there. And it's got all greased with a big bolt sticking through it. And then that bolt drops down into this hole and they go a nut on it. And that's how we pivot. And we just keep this well greased every couple of months. Um, we can, I don't even think it'll need it that often, probably twice a year because we're only using it in the summer months anyway, maybe midway through the summer. And um, we just check up the body, pump in more grease in there and it should be fine. Uh, that's my thinking anyway. Um, so I'm going to get this all put back together. And then we got a lucky putting in some floors. All right, I've almost got the floor in. And so here we're using well mesh. This is 40 by 40 mil well mesh. It's really hard to get actually to bring this in from the UK. And with Brexit, um, cost a fortune. You could use poultry slats. Um, you could maybe use, very difficult to get, this is inch and a half. You can get one inch or two inch here in Ireland readily available but you can get two by one, which might work as well. Um, or I like this stuff, it works really well. I find the poultry slats, the, sla the gaps are a little too narrow, but uh, this works really well, I find, because it gives the birds foot support, but it lets the manure through. Um, so that's what I've used. And I've just went, instead of welding it down, I'm just cable tying it down, uh, sticking cable ties all the way around, um, just because uh, I'm just thinking down the line, you know, in five, ten years time if I want to paint the, because this steel here gets a lot of bird poop on it. Um, so if I want to clean this up, well, it'll be pretty easy to take the floor out and give all these a good paint again. So that's my thinking there, and it's totally fine. Uh, I'm not going to be walking in here that often, so it's just holding up the birds really. Um, so I'm happy with that. I've just got to cut out my two little doors here which I'm working on right now and uh, cut these out so these can drop down and that'll be the first floor in and my next part I'm going to work on is the nest boxes I'm going to get the rollers back on get the belt on and get the siding and all on these and you can see here I was just looking I've already put some mesh up it's just sitting up there with us after the nest box then I'm going to put it in my second floor Okay, I've reattached my rollers on both ends and I put on, this is a guide bar, so the egg belt, which you don't have on there now, but the egg belt is going to sit on here and you can see these bars are all in the direction of the egg belt, so they rest on this here, but they will hit, the belt will sit up and this will keep the be belt from running off because it'll be sitting at an angle, maybe 10 to 14 degrees, so this keeps the egg belt on and the eggs. The eggs, I'll put a bit of uh, cushioning on this and that'll keep the eggs on. And now I'm just working on boxing off these guys. Um, we're just using, this is a galvanized steel plate. It's like three, uh, 0.3 mil. And it's galvanized, don't need to worry about it. Uh, it's a bit of corrosion, it'll wipe off, but um, it's a good job. It'll be great for mites because we've got the mesh floor, the nest mats, and now this galvanizing steel structure um, any crap in here will fall straight through. Likewise, if I grab my egg belt and this guy here is sitting on here. Uh, if there's any cracks or anything in the eggs, go straight through here and bur it'll go straight onto the ground eventually. If birds don't get it before then. And I show you now this what I showing you the belt can slide along here and that keeps everything right. So I got to put on roofs now. That's what I'm gonna cut next. So I'm gonna put a again galvanized steel roof up here. And then this is the one then I gotta figure out. So we want our back. We want to leave enough room here so that our back uh, is the eggs can roll through, but not too much space that the chickens start uh, poking their heads through. So I'm going to get the roof saw on and then I'll put on the backs in. 
Okay, so I'm just trying to figure out how my nest mats are going to work. So the nest mats are going to need to get changed. They're going to get pulled in and out from that side. And I've just put two little screws sticking up here. And uh, what will happen is the nest mat comes in and he slots in there. And it's holding that to the nest mat. Can't keep coming down because there's nothing else holding the nest mat. It could keep on coming out in here. So this holds it in place. And then our egg goes here and rolls down to here. And as you can see, this guy works perfect. Now I am going to put a bit of padded tape along the inside. I'll probably use like polytunnel hotspot tape or something so that it's when it rests, it hits it. But now I've got uh, over 400 mil of egg storage by 7.2 meters long, I think. I'm going to hold a lot of eggs. I reckon this can really hold two days worth of eggs. That's the plan anyway. Uh, so if I only wanted to collect eggs every two days, I could do that. I don't think I'll be doing that this season, but it's the option. So yeah, I'm just now going to figure out what height I need this back. So I just, I'm going to measure my egg and I'm going to get down low now here and measure from the top down. So there's enough room for the egg to come through. And uh, I'm just going to screw it on with tech screws. So if I maybe misjudged it, I could always come back and move it up a little uh, or cut a little bit off it. And there's the nest boxes uh, all closed up. That's them from the back. And what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fix this little piece of aluminium all the way along here. And I'll use that as my proper height adjuster. Um, so I can adjust this up and down. Uh, and what I might even do is bolt it on and cut out a slot so I can move it up and down and then have like a wing nut that I can tighten on. Uh, potentially thinking that's what I'm going to do there. You get a look at them from the front. That's them from the front. So now I'm going to put in roost bars and nest closers. And so we get the front of it sorted out. And I got to put on, this isn't actually my belt, this is an old belt. I got to put on my full belt and put some rollers in underneath to hold the belt up uh, on the underside because the underside has no support yet. So it's starting to look like a hen house. Okay, I've got this guy here fitted and as you can see I've actually cut a slot out of it so I can adjust it uh, up and down. See this one here so I can, I want to make slight adjustments. Um, I think the hens are getting their head out too much, I can blow it down. If it's the eggs aren't rolling through I can raise it up a little bit and I've done that all the way along. So that's that pretty much finito and I've made sure I've tested eggs and made sure they can roll out here nice. Um, so my next job now is to install my egg belt, got a new shiny egg belt. So what I've do, done is I've just, I put it on loosely here and I'll cut off whatever's excess. I've ordered, I actually ordered enough because this is an old belt I had here and I ordered enough to make a second belt if I needed. Um, so I've just cable tied it together here quickly. What I need to do now is put in uh, rollers for the return belt and that's these guys here and it's basically just because you don't want it sitting with this big lag on it so we take these they're just a simple roller they've got little uh see if you can get that little these are spring loaded clips in the end and i just use little l brackets like these guys and they i've already drilled out some of these to take it i think it's that one there and so what we're going to do is this is going to hold the return belt and it'll take all that slack out of there because I don't want birds jumping up in there and crapping or anything in there. So I'm going to get these uh, return belt rollers installed and then set off the, or cut off the belt and tighten it. Okay, that's our, our mat in place. And these rollers are doing a really nice job, keeping it nice and clean. And birds won't get up in there. And I've just got to track as best I can. Um, and so I've just got a practice spanner on here. And one thing that you might be able to see, I went over the inside of this drum with sandpaper just to make it rougher. Um, I'm also going to, it's getting quite windy here, I'm also going to paint up this wood so it's all sealed up. Uh, it's the only piece of wood there at the minute. And so I want to seal all this up. So I'm just going to get some of the oxide paint and fill all that up so it's all smooth. Um, put shiny belt and I have a track so that it's running. That's the beauty about this system here. If it's 
their belt run a little bit crooked all I do is I can loosen if I tighten this bolt down here I take loosen this bolt take it off if I tighten down on these two I push this out and I can do the same on the other side so I can use it to tighten the belt I've got it to a nice tightness and I can also move it to track the belt what I mean by tracking is if this drum was if I exaggerate if the drum was that way then the belt would all just come down my side so you got to get the drum the two drums got to be perpendicular to the angle of the belt uh, or to the direction of the belt and so that's how I do it using these guys here now I've got my now one thing I've done is I've got a little chair I'm probably going to collect my eggs on so like I was saying I originally planned to be standing but my nest boxes were too high so I've got a chair so I can spin out These will be just on a rocker switch and when, but there's 200 mil of movement there so 100 mil each way and you can see now we're getting lots of travel and I will put a little level up here and the switch will be up here so I can do all this from right here so every time we move it we'll just level off the nest boxes again. I'm thinking about a 10 degree slope is going to be optimum on this belt. Um, typically on rollaway nest boxes you go maybe 10 to 14. Because the eggs have quite a bit to travel, I think I'll be going closer to 10. Um, just uh, And really I'll figure this out um, as I go. Um, I'll be fine tuning it for the first few weeks of the egg mobile. And basically whenever the eggs aren't getting cracked, but aren't getting left behind in there, that'll be the sweet number and I'll set my level to that. Happy days. Now that's the back of the nest box almost finished. The last thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to block up between here and the wall. I'll use some one break or something that'll go across here so birds don't jump up here. Um, a little bit of one break or something will, will stop that. And I'm now working on the front. I need to put in the nest box closers and I'm just thinking uh, I'm going to actually weld on this little guy on here like this um, because I was trying it a few different ways but I basically need my, my hand out of the way. I need this to go on like this and then he needs to pivot right around so he can sit down here and the birds can load up and then it can close up automatically like that. Um, that's the system I'm going to use. There's a hundred different ways you could do this. Um, this is just quick and easy for me. So I always worked with my other nest boxes, so I'm going to go with it. Okay, got the head down there and got a little bit done. Um, so I've got my nest boxes, uh, not all together finished, but nearly there. Uh, just fitting the ram. I've got the mesh in for all the top deck. Um, so the top deck isn't really going to get used that much. Um, in the grand scheme of things, when the birds are in pasture, they're never going to go up there. They're going to be out in pasture, they're going to come in to roost, they're going to come in to lay an egg, and then they're going to go again. In the event of bird flu, I'm probably going to dock this. We typically get bird flu in the wintertime. So I'm going to dock this to a polytunnel to give them covered, free-range space, and they're not going to be that fussed about using up there either. Uh, if in the strange event we got bird flu in the summertime, I'd probably, I've got a big marquee. Uh, I wouldn't put them in the polytunnel in the summertime, it'll get too hot. We've got a big marquee, it's like 12 metres by 6 metres, I'll probably put that up, put the egg mobile beside it and use that as a covered outdoor space. So in reality the top floor of this is never going to get used. It's there to tick the box, um, uh, which the regulators needed to be there, so that's fine. So that's why I've put it in mesh. Um, I'm going to put some, there needs to be a uh, scratch surface in this. So I was, I've been looking for some, for a material that's not ridiculous price, um, like a flexi board or something. Uh, I haven't found anything yet, so at the minute, because I want to get this project done, I'm going to put some MDF up there, some wood. I know I don't want to put wood in here. Um, it's not going to be my long-term solution. I'm going to get something else. Um, so I'm just going to cover over the mesh with uh, uh, thin plywood right now, and that will cover, and this is going to be on the top deck, and that will give me my scratch surface area, which I need a third of the flo floor space. Now I have been, because I really don't want to put wood in here, but the roosts have been, I've been thinking about them for a while. 
I don't want to make them out of steel because I just feel it's not natural. Um, birds are typically roosting trees. I feel the steel would be cold. Um, so I am going to put in wooden roosts. It's going to be the only, when I'm all said and done, it's going to be the only wooden part in here, but I'm going to use plain material so that there's no real pores in it or anything. Um, and I'm also not going to put it directly on the steel. I'm going to try and use a bolt to keep it up a little bit off the steel so there's no nooks and crannies uh, for lice to get in or mites to get in. Okay, so like I said before, I couldn't really have been bothered uh, designing some big fancy thing that would kick the birds out. I find that I can time it uh, in the evening time. There's a time when there's no birds in the nest boxes and I can close them up fine. So what I've done is and now my battery's a little bit dead, so this is going a bit slow. But you can see I've got an actuator in here. I'm actually going to put two on it. I'm going to put another one up there as well. Just haven't got around to it. But uh, the actuator will push out the... It's going to drop. I had to do a bit of fiddling about to figure out how this would work. But uh, this battery needs some charging. But there comes our... So this will open. It's probably like 5 o'clock in the morning. And it will close in the evening. For me, it's typically around... Uh, Any time between 3.30 and 5 is a good time to close the nest boxes. Uh, this will open a little bit faster. My battery needs to be charged up. Uh, but this will be our nest boxes opening. And I still have to build my control box. This will be remotely controlled as well, so I can do this from my phone. Uh, and I've just got it so that they can drop right down. So there's a nice easy height for the birds to jump up on and that's just going to be their ladder to get into the nest boxes. And that's it. Now I still have to put in another ram up there in that one. And I'm also going to put some, the rams are holding the weight on this, but I'm going to put a piece of steel rope from here down so that it's just slightly up. Whenever the rams are done, that it's just slightly up so the rams aren't actually taking the weight that uh, the ropes will be taking it and that will make the longevity of the actuators last much longer. Um, I'm also going to have to put some uh, windbreak or shade cloth, shade cloth from here up to block this out, but uh, that's one of the finer details. I'm slowly getting there. It's all a little fiddly stuff now. Um, what I've got to work on next, I've got to put in roost bars here. I've got to put in some water uh, my water line, I've got, I had a water made up from before I'm going to reuse. Um, it's actually over here. So, got this line anyway, I just got to install that. And do all the fiddly stuff I'm working here on installing an actuator for the door. Um, I pop this. So this will be how the door will work. So I've got this wired and my actuator will pull the door up and that'll be the door closed and then the actuator opens, the door goes down. Uh, so got to fit this, got to fit one on the other side because there's two doors. I'm going to put on two actuators, one on each. Um, just, I was thinking about it. Uh, if, the act if anything was to fail, well, if you have two of them, you have a chance of one of the doors opening and it'll be, they'll, if they're doing half the work, they'll last twice as long. Um, slowly getting there, fiddly stuff, going to get through it. I'll show you as I get it done. Okay, we're getting there. Um, what have I done so far? I've got my roost bars on. Um, I left one bar behind actually, which goes from here. And so with the roost bars, what I've actually done, you can see I've actually kept them up off this. I didn't want to put it hard on this because that's a little area where mites would get in. And the other thing I'm going to do with these roost bars, you can see I put a, a chamfer across the top and I need to sand this nice and smooth um, so that the birds can perch on. It's nice and comfortable for them. Their feet can go around it. Uh, where I'm joining, so there's a join in here. I've just put a screw straight through it and now I'm going to seal this with some sealant all the way around because mites would love to get into that little joint. So I'm going to seal that up. Um, I have considered painting it to try and seal it up more from mites. Um, but I think I'll just run with this and see how we get on. And I can always change them out, it's not a big job. So there's going to be four roosts on this level. I'm also going to put uh, four roosts on the top level as well. Uh, just flat on the ground. Um, 
so that'll get up our roof space. I've, you can see I've got my camera in. I'm just kind of wiring it up now. I've got the door on the far side done. If I go around and show you. It's uh, very simple. The wire goes on here. The actuator goes up to a roller. And then when the actuator goes out, it closes the door up. If this actuator goes in, the door will go down. Now, I need to actually have a bracket to put on here. I'm not going to leave cable ties on there. Um, but that's as simple as that. I just need to do the same on the other side. And then I've got to run all the cables. When I get the cables all hooked up and the control box in, I'll show you the everything in action. I've got my nest box doors finished. You can see I've got these wires to take the weight. Um, and I have one more actuator to actually got lost in the post. Um, I had ordered three actuators and two cam. One of them had fallen out of the box. Uh, so I'm going to focus on getting all my wiring in and get ready for the... I'm going to put in the water line and then the cladding goes in. Okay, I'm just running all my wires here. So my control box, my battery is going to sit up there in my control box. And my electric fence charger is going to sit right underneath it. And the reason why I have everything together is good to keep them short because the solar panel is actually going to be on the roof on top and the battery is going to be right here. So there's really short distances between everything. So it won't be losing any efficiency in the cables. Um, and then I'm just running out the wires to all my actuators. So you can see what I do here is I just put, because I'm going to be running loads of cables, um, every actuator and every light, every camera gets its own cable. So I just put a cable tie loose and I thread everything through. And then when I have all my wires on, then I go around and tight, get them all nice and neat and tighten them all up. For joiners, we're just using these. These are Wago joiners. Um, they're really good. You can use them. They're really good for sound cable as well. Um, if you're joining up any sound cable, uh, there won't be any interference. And these are good for like 300 volts, um, so they're just perfect. Now I do like to cover them. I don't have any here, but I'll come back and I'll cover these in insulating tape just so that mites or nothing can get in there because that'll be a lovely little home for some mites. Um, so I just, once everything's where I want it, I cover everything up. When you're doing work like this, you need the tools for the job. Uh, these are just a pair of wire strippers, but um, you know, if you don't have a wire strippers and you're just stripping them with a knife and a pair of pliers, you're going to spend so much time just stripping the ends of wires, whereas scratch it, clink, strip the wire, then bear one wire, bear two wire, and I'm ready to go. If I was doing that with, with the wrong tools, uh, it'd probably take me like a minute and a half. And you need a dead sharp pair of pliers, and it makes this job a treat. Um, so now I can see here, this is, this is the union for the two door actuators. So one wire is coming from here, one wire is coming from over there, and then the other wire going past here, that's with the camera there, that's power to the camera. Uh, I don't need a feed because it uh, works off Wi-Fi, the camera, so I just need to get power to it. Now I'm hooking up the power for my Nest Box Tilt. Um, where'd it go on me? It's right here. I need to join this actuator with this one here and then run power off to my control box. So yeah, I'm going to keep at this. Next is going to be lights. And I'll show you that when I get that done. I'm just building a control panel here. This is actually for some friends of mine in Loch Nere Farm. Um, I don't build these anymore. I just don't have the time. But i got to build one for the new Eggmobile. So I've got to do it anyway. So I'm going to build one for the guys here first. And then I'm going to build the panel for the new Eggmobile. And if you want to find out any, any more about this, I've got my online training, which basically teaches you how to build this um, step by step. Um, if you want to automate your egg one, we'll check that out. Well, I set up late last night. Uh, got the panel completed, ready to go. And I just got to pop in the switch there. This, I need to go get a bigger drill bit to pop this guy through here. And then that's it, ready to go. Another nice, clean, tidy panel. Happy days.